Hey guys, this is WizWorld100, back with a new video series that I wanted to try doing, or at least experiment to see what you guys think of it, because I've always been wanting to try this series called The Good, The Bad, The Game. Yeah, super original, but like, uh, I, I liked how it sounded. It was just like The Good, The Bad, The Game. Anyways, the primary focus of The Good, The, good, the Bad, The Game is just looking at all the good points of a game or whatever I'm looking at, like, say, a device or anything, which in this case it's the Mini NES. So just looking at all the good things and then looking at all the bad things and then drawing a conclusion at the end. Not quite like a review where I go in depth to it, but just kind of listing all the points and then like what I think of it at the end of it. So I wanted to try, so I've always wanted to try the series. Wasn't sure where to try it, so I figured let's try it on this one and give it a little test one and leave some feedback to tell me what you think of it or to just not be done at all. But hey, at least I'm giving it a try. So let's get on with the good, the bad, the game on the mini NES. The mini NES, so what is it? It's a plug and play system that Nintendo announced uh, one or two months ago at the time of this recording and well, pretty much everyone that's a Nintendo fan is pretty much excited about it. Myself included because I have a soft spot for plug and plays. If you've seen my video game review series, I've done a couple of plug and plays like the FIFA plug and play system, the Sega Genesis plug and play system, and oh yeah, that thing is completely like brand new and that's never been done before. It hasn't been around for like years and stuff and I got a super advanced copy like like five years before it even came out, so what? Uh, definitely go check that review out. Nintendo has been around for years. But yeah, let's take a look at what the good stuff is on the, the Mini NES. So here are what I consider are the good things of the Mini NES. It's one, it comes with 30 games, and they're, for the most part, first party titles, or at least really good quality titles, so uh, that's really, really cool, and especially considering that if you look at the 30 games listed online, some of these games are kind of hard to find or really expensive to get. So with the mini NES, uh, $69.99, you just get those 30 games and, it's, and you're just done. For instance, games like Castlevania, which I've been looking for, haven't had much luck. Mini NES would solve that problem. Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out uh, featuring Mr. Dream. Um, it's a game I'm willing to play but not willing to pay. It's a game I'm willing to play, but not a game I'm willing to pay, because it's it's like $44.99 if you, yeah, depending on where you look. And that's essentially almost, almost, uh, or at least close to the price of the Mini NES itself. And then other games like Kirby, Double Dragon, uh, Contra, of course the Mario games as well. So, if anything, the Mini NES is good value, and I like good value. Another good thing about the Mini NES is that it's a portable system. That's why it's called the Mini NES. And that's great because you know what? That cuts the hassle of having to bring your actual NES, which is like 10, like a bunch of times bigger than the Mini NES. Plus, you don't have to carry 30 games with you because it comes in the Mini NES, like just built right inside of it. And that's really, really convenient. You can just bring it anywhere. You can bring it on a trip to you to, oh, I don't know, a convention or somewhere, or a, or a trip to your friend's place, and you guys can just play NES without uh, the hassle of bringing all the original things and plus, uh, you know, the wiring and all that stuff. So, you know, being portable is pretty cool. So an interesting feature on the Mini NES is that it has HDMI output. In fact, it's the only output it has, but, but here's the thing I'm getting at. Does that mean we get pixel-perfect uh, graphics where, like, pixels are all very, very clean and super clear and none of that blur from anti-aliasing that you get from either playing on a CRT or uh, HDMI TV using the AV cable? It'd be, it'd be really neat if it was just super clean. And being that it's emulated, there's a pretty good chance it's probably going to be top quality. But then you gotta consider that I, I have a feeling that it's gonna be emulated like the virtual console on the Nintendo, like on the like on the main Nintendo system. So it might not actually be pixel perfect, but hey, we can hope and speculate about it, right? Pixel perfection. 
So another feature that you know, I personally found kind of interesting, mostly because it's kind of cool, is that the NES controllers that come up the mini NES, you can use it to plug into your Wiimote, so when you're playing your NES games on your virtual console, instead of like flipping the Wiimote sideways and playing it like that, which works just fine by the way, you can use your NES controller and play your NES games on your virtual console, making it more authentic. It's kind of cool, not necessary, but you know, still kind of a neat thing. Vice versa, does that mean I can take my classic controller and plug that into the mini NES to act as a second controller or a controller replacement? Because uh, that'd be pretty cool and it'd save a couple of bucks. And I, it's also kind of funny too because I'd imagine Nintendo wants you to buy a second controller since they only package you with one controller. So it kind of seems like if you've already bought like a bunch of like class controllers or something that can be plugged into a Wii mode like uh, the Tatsunoko vs. Capcom arcade stick, that uh, you can probably just use those to plug into the NES and play it. And, you know, hopefully that works out. It'd be pretty cool. I'd imagine it, it should work. And if it doesn't, then it really sucks. So another part of the mini NES that I like, and this is what kind of convinced me to really consider getting it, is that it costs $69.99, which is actually pretty good if you consider uh, buying a mini NES with all its games loaded on it versus buying an actual NES with all the games uh, that was listed in the mini NES. If you if you bought everything authentically, that's that, that's too much. That's way too much. Like the mini NES just like saves all that hassle, and it's just a really good value for a plug-in play. So that's a really good point for the mini NES. Now onto the bad points. All right, so onto the bad points. Now. This next point is subjective because I'm just going to be saying that uh, I think that some of the games on the mini NES's uh, library isn't that great and that they could be replaced by better games, so like I said, it's kind of subjective, but I feel like there could have been better games on it, like <coughs> Battletoads. Uh, but yeah, subjective uh, point, so next one. Now this next point is pretty bad, and I think that most of you, if not all of you, would agree with me on this. The mini NES has no way to expand its library of games. Like, like the mini NES, it comes with the 30 games, you're stuck with those 30 games. Uh, as far as I've seen, there's no way to increase the library of game or your library of games if you bought the mini NES, and that really, really sucks because it holds it back so much. Like, I had an idea where if you, you know, they would have like an SD, an SD card or whatever, like, you know, if you can open the flap of the mini NES, there'd be like an SD slot in there, and, uh, essentially, or, or, or DS slot, or whatever. And uh, Nintendo would essentially just release, like, these, these SD slots, these 3DS carts or whatever, in the shape of a mini NES cartridge, and you just plug it in, and you get another 30 games or whatever that they downloaded onto the cart, and that would be pretty amazing. It'd be like, from uh, mini NES, mini NES uh, classic hits, the next volume 2, the next 30 games or whatever. And you'd have like, oh, I don't know, more Mega Man games, uh, the games that we wanted uh, initially built into the system or whatnot, and you would just, you would just keep selling those cards and, you know, we'd probably buy it. That'd be pretty great, I'd probably buy it too, just mini NES, mini NES cartridge, and just plug it and play, it'd be great. But no. Nintendo's like, more like Nintendo. Why, why would you limit the potential of the mini NES by doing this? Like that's a, like, like the biggest thing that makes it hard to completely recommend the mini NES. Like seriously, I think most of you would agree with me on that. that that's like the, that's the thing that stopped the people I talked to about that. Not being able to expand your library of games is probably the one point about the mini NES that stops the, uh, most people from fully recommending it because it's like, do I even need to explain it? It just, it just sucks. Next. Okay, so this one is about the NES controllers that come with the mini NES. What, and this is mostly speculation, but what I'm worried about is I'm hoping the quality of the NES controller is not like the Tomy uh, NES replica controllers, because those controllers, while they're functional, they're 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 actually not that good. And if uh, that's what the NES controllers on the mini N and and if that's what the NES controllers on the mini NES is going to be like, then 
that's gonna really ruin your NES uh, gaming experience, in my opinion. But like I said, this is just speculation, and if it's true, well... Yeah. So that's the good and the bad on the mini NES, so now it's time for the game. Should you even get it? Well, despite the fact that you can't expand the library of games on the mini NES, which is like a huge letdown, and come on, everyone's gonna complain about that part of the mini NES. But, despite that, I still think you should get it, because, uh, for one, it's good value, and two, if, if the system fails, like, you know, fails in, like, uh, you know, selling because of that, of not being able to expand the library of games, it's gonna be a collector's item, and that's gonna be a really cool thing to have. Well, that's it for the good, the bad, the game, so hopefully you enjoyed this series. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, because I've been trying to get this series, like, going at some point, like, like, really, like, much, much earlier in time before, but I never found a good subject to use it on, so, uh, I'm hoping you guys will like it, just, like, like I said, leave me some feedback, and, uh, this is Wizard 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewers, so stay tuned for more Wizard 100. See ya!